Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're going to work on a, uh, a little project. Uh, it's a short production run, but it's, it's challenging because it's urethane, and it's, uh, it's a UHMW. This is what we started with. This is just a, uh, you know, a round bar, and the, the UHMW is a ultra-high molecular weight urethane. So it's, it's a really compressed urethane. There's, it's devoid of any air bubbles or anything like that. And it's a pretty dense urethane. But it's uh, also surprisingly difficult to work with. And, you know, we're going to go through some of the challenges. And our finished product is, uh, you know, we're removing more material than we're leaving. This is our finished product here. It's not much. And let's go through the steps that I... Uh, did to make those parts. You know, I had over 200 pieces to make and we're going to start with, uh, first thing I did is just put it on the chop saw and slab them up. And I left uh, uh, 40 thousandths per side, you know, in, in the chop saw of uh, machining allowance on the width. And now I just have all these little discs of, uh, of uh, material that are rough sawn on both sides and the OD is not that accurate either. But, uh, First thing we got to do is get a hole in them. You know, we got to get at least a rough hole in them. And let's uh, let's go look at how we how we did that uh, quickly and easily. Okay, well that little 5C call it fixture is uh, quick and easy and on the drill press it's quicker than doing it in the lathe. I, I just, you know, we just blazed a one inch hole in them. Our final dimension on that hole is uh, oh, 1.2 something. So, you know, you got a little bit of machining allowance there uh, with a rough hole and we don't really care at this point. All we, all we, all we need to do is get a hole in it. So uh, those, those went quick on the drill press. Uh, now we're going to move over to the lathe. Uh, we're going to take that same, this is the call it. This is, this is a three inch uh, emergency type collet and that, you know, machine it to whatever size you need. And that's the same size as our, uh, as, a, as our rough stock there, you know, so that clamps up on that. So uh, it went, the same collet got used over on the drill press. Now let's move it over to the lathe and uh, get those holes to size. Okay, well here we're going to start uh, pulling out the center of them. So we've got a little bit of drop off from the end and we're going to insert our new part and we've just got a one inch rough hole so you're going to see a bunch of run out. I'm using a very long, very thin boring bar and I'm going to show you why here in a second. Uh, just barely in the frame you're going to be able to catch me, uh, put my thumb against the bar, pushing it away and attracting the tool. Now uh, this keeps me from dragging on the way out so uh, that's the reason for the long thin boring bar. Okay, so now that we've got a good ID, uh, we're, we're pretty much done with the, uh, the OD collet. Now we need to switch to an ID collet. And this is, uh, here's, here it is with the part on it. There's the part right there. And this is an expanding uh, mandrel type 5C, which are available. And it's an emergency type, so you can machine it. It's machinable, and you can uh, make it fit your OD, whatever that may be. So this leaves me just enough room right here to get in here and do a face cut and get our first bevel in. So let, let's, let's go run uh, at least one side of these. Get one side to size and with the bevel on it. Okay. 
Okay, well here we've got a triangular shaped tool. This is a 60 degree tool, but it's uh, also oriented to the part. Uh, at 45 degrees, you can see uh, it's doing a rough chamfer. Uh, not all the way to depth, but I am cleaning up the face. Uh, and getting one clean face cut, and then getting a rough chamfer on it. Uh, not hitting any stops or anything like that. We're just giving us one reference surface to uh, uh, so that when we flip, we can start using the stops. And here you can see how nasty that stuff is. It's just like rubber bands. Uh, do not get tangled up in this stuff. If you get a bird's nest around the uh, uh, the mandrel, shut the machine down and get it out of there. If you get caught in one of those rubber bands, it'll suck you in. But uh, here we're using both sides uh, of the of the uh, triangular shaped tool to get just get a just get a face and a rough bevel. Okay, so that was our third op, was getting one side of these things correct. Uh, now it's time to leave the same rig on there, and now we're going to flip them, and we're going to cut them to width, and come in and do our final bevel. Okay, and it's time to get these things uh, to width. So what we're going to do is we're going to index it on the collet. Now uh, you just use a little Teflon block to make sure it's seated all the way down. And I'm coming up with a chamfer tool and going to hit a hit a hard stop, a carriage stop. And now I'm going to take a separate tool, which is your, uh, a facing tool, and I'm going to face it from the inside out so that doesn't pull the burr on the inside. Now I'm going to flip, and I'm going to go back to my chamfer tool and hit the same stop to assure that both of the chamfers are uh, are equal. Um, this was a rough chamfer in our first op, but here we're uh, doing a doing a finish. And I'm just using dials, bring it up on a zero, and then we're going to run in and hit a stop, and that makes sure both doubles are equal in all, all respects. Um, I check about every other one as they're coming off the machine for size, and uh, it's just lather, rinse, repeat. It's just a lot more of the same. Back to the Teflon block, push in, lock the collet, run your chamfer. Switch tools and face it from the inside out so it pulls the, uh, the burr to the outside if there's going to be one. Um, I'm using razor sharp tools. They are literally razors. So they, uh, This stuff needs to be cut, not, uh, not pushed or anything else. But here's our last chamfer cleanup. My dial set on zero. Hit my stop. Check it for width, and out of here. Next up. Okay, now we've got left side done, right side done. They're to width. Our bore is correct, um, and we've done both chambers. Now all we need to do is just trim this top down and, and cut that to size, and that's just a matter of locking the carriage and one last off. Okay, we're getting ready for the OD cut. Again with a Teflon block just to square it up and make it go on the mandrel a little easier. Uh, this is the same tool we were using for facing. And you see I make a pass across, I remove the part, and I back off the tool so I don't scratch it on the way out. Um, and again, if, you, if uh, you get the rubber bands tangled up on, the, on your collet, uh, shut your machine down. Don't, don't stick your hands in there with those rubber bands flying around. I got pretty lucky the way the, uh, the chips and the sport were coming off. You're not going to break this stuff. It's going to be one continuous rubber band. And uh, it's, it's, uh, if that's spinning around on that mandrel and you put your hand in there, those rubber bands are quite strong. They're going to pull you in. So just take the time to shut it down. Don't try to deal with it with it spinning at all. Uh, they're real rubbery and uh, they'll really get a hold of you. All right, so it's just lather, rinse, repeat. Just cutting the OD. This is a non-critical surface. Um, you know, I checked about the first 10 that came off the machine. We were hitting our mark every time. So uh, we're just getting the OD to size and giving it a cleanup.
Okay, so these parts are done. Um, that's the finished product. They're already wrapped up and shipped. And I want you to notice the clean brakes I got on the UHMW at all the transition points and everything. Uh, I didn't have to touch them with a deburr knife or anything. But that's the, uh, those are all the brakes I was getting, uh, you know, from the chamfer to the OD cut, to the ID cut, to the facing, everything uh, without any strings or rubber bands that uh, we're so used to seeing with UHMW. And I, <laughs> I did a, a poor man's cryogenic uh, machine, machining on it. I did notice that in the afternoons when it warmed up around here, these things machined poorly. And in the morning when it was still cool, they machined very nicely. So uh, take a look at this. So there you have it. Parts on ice. It gets rid of that little flashing. And the, anyone that's ever machined UHMW knows you. It, when you're just coming off the part, it's going to roll an edge out and make a big rubber band off the side. You got this big floppy mess right at one of your brakes. You know, right, right at this, this brake or this brake, you'll have a rubber band hanging off of a big burr that you got to try to cut off cleanly with a knife. UHMW cannot be abraded. You can't take it over to a belt sander and just take a little bit off. Uh, it'll, it'll just melts like wax. It's just over. So uh, it, it has to be cut with extremely sharp tools. So uh, hope you enjoyed these tips and uh, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.